Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to GOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius on Charles, because today is the 10th of June 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, a few of the charts that we looked at um, yesterday. So you have just to see how everything is kind of getting along. But uh, yeah, as always, guys, before we jump jump in, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then also just before we jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank uh, website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. Um, now then, uh, also quick update on what's happening here globally. So let me just adjust uh, this uh, image here so yep um, okay so basically the figure yes continues to rise um, however uh, let's keep let's keep an eye on the daily cases and as you can see the daily cases have, have sparked and pushed higher so uh, basically it comes to the same idea um, that I was talking about where basically you know, where it it continues to move in a uh, sinus cosinus fashion, basically it moves up and down, up and down. Um, however, the trajectory right now is still to the upside, unfortunately. Well, hopefully this can turn around uh, soon. Now then, uh, jumping into a few charts now, uh, the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. Now, a quick update. Um, yesterday, I talked about this uh, this in this index. And uh, yesterday, basically, I was mentioning that if it fails to move above this 12,887 zone, then uh, keep your eyes on the uh, the high, the low of June 8th, which was the day before that, and or the previous day. Um, and basically, if we, uh, what I was saying that if we see a drop below the 12,671 zone and we see a daily close, then yep, there is a possibility for this one to. Uh, maybe correct a little bit lower here. Um, if we take a look at the cash index right now, and let me just quickly jump into that. We are seeing a little bit of a recovery, to be honest. We're seeing a bit of a, a push back above this 12,671 zone. Now, again, don't get me wrong. Uh, we still have the full Euro, Euro, European session to go through. However, um, again, for us to get excited about higher levels, well, still the same game plan remains. We need to see a push above the 12,887 zone in order to aim for higher levels. And in terms of the downside, uh, yes, given the fact that we, yesterday we've closed uh, below this mm, this 12,671 zone, that kind of increases the chances uh, of this one drifting a little bit lower here. Uh, but the downside here would be limited near this upside support line taken from the low the 14th of May. So uh, keep your eyes on this one. Again, like I said, guys, right now looking at the cash index, we are seeing a, a, a push back to the upside. Um, it is back above this level here, the 12,671. 12, um, however, as I said, that doesn't mean that the, the index could reverse sharply to the upside. For now, I mean, we will we will consider the upside if we get a push above this 12,887 territory. So yep, Keep your eyes on that one. Uh, now then, the FTSE 100 here, the uh, situation is a little bit more complicated. Um, the index uh, sold off yesterday heavily and uh, basically it ended up testing this uh, short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of May. Now I talked about this one yesterday in my morning video and uh, basically what I was saying that 
even if we see a drop lower as long as this area continues to provide support uh, still the uh, the upside scenario could be possible however don't get me wrong both of these lines are tentative so even if we see a drop lower here uh, it could move to the downside because still the bulls have a, have a chance to enter somewhere near this upside line as well so even like I said even if we drift further down uh, yes it from the short term perspective it could be a little bit of a bad situation here for the uh, for the buyers but um, be very careful guys I mean of course right now looking at the cash index it also is rebounding a little bit higher so it still remains above this um, above this upside line however it's, it's very uh, tricky right now here at this point and let me just clear up this chart a little bit and remove some of these well I'll keep the Fibonacci because still this the 61.8 percent retracement on the Fibonacci coincides nicely with the 200 day EMA so I'll keep that in, uh, for now on the chart however uh, as you can see the the the, mm, uh, the index this week traveled higher towards this 6536 territory came very close to testing it and then reversed back down and this level by the way is the lowest point of 2018 and this is where this is what kind of this area held the index from moving higher so of course this makes us worry a little bit but um, eventually if we do get a nice push above this then yes higher levels could be met but again for now guys probably uh wait this one out because again i'll jump into uh, I'll, I'll jump into gbp oz and i'll show you that the pound currently is strengthening a little bit and uh basically mm, it, it's it's kind of working against the FTSE. so uh the stronger pound is not very good for the FTSE for the for the FTSE. so uh that's why we will remain a little bit more careful with this specific index and uh, yep uh, we'll keep an eye on this area here and first of all we'll keep an eye on this short-term upside support line although it's like I said it is a bit of a tentative one uh, taken from the low of the 14th of May here at this upside line if this get bro gets broken then we'll keep an eye on this level here the 6231 and uh, if we see a drop below this then yes slightly lower levels could be met uh, gold gold is uh, making its way nicely back above this upside support line taken from the low of the 21st of april and uh yep it's um it's getting close to this 1723 territory i talked about this one and basically what i was saying uh yesterday that um if we do get a nice push above this uh 1723 territory then yes uh higher levels could be met <clears throat> of course don't get me wrong as something that i've mentioned yesterday as well that the more comfortable uh, level after a break of which uh, we would aim for higher levels is still this 1748 zone because that's the highest point of April and as you can see it kind of in May it kept the price down as well so uh, that's why yes a push above the 1723 yes could open the door towards higher levels again however <coughs> However, the um, uh, however the the next target here is for us this 1748, where we'll be very very careful. But if it, if it manages to violate this area, then yes, uh, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high. And uh, especially if we get a nice daily close above this area, above the 1748, then yes, uh, we could aim for higher levels. But until then, for now, all eyes are on the 1723 zone. Uh, we need to see a nice, good, strong move above it. And uh, yep, um, in terms of the downside here, uh, still the 1681, 80 zone here would be that area uh, after a break of which we could consider lower levels. But again maybe not even only a break we would also like to see a daily close at least a daily candle closing here below this area and then we could aim for for further declines um quick update on ripple here uh to be honest it's not much happening i mean it's it's a bit, it's a bit boring uh, however, I mean, maybe it's a, a paradise for uh, short-term kind of short-term scalper range traders, something like that, basically. Because as you can see, this this crypto continues just to kind of move sideways here for now. But to be honest, the more it kind of gets squeezed like this, I mean, the the more it ranges like this in a, in, a, in a, within a narrow uh, between a narrow. Uh, 
within a narrow area, um, then kind of the more chances for this one to explode later on if, if some sort of a news hits the wires. So that's why for now, guys, we will um, we'll be very careful here and um, we'll keep an eye on this barrier. This is 0 0.2053 territory. I talked about a lot about this level uh, and uh, as long as it kind of stays intact or I wouldn't even say it stays intact, but basically as long as the kind of the, the crypto trades below this, then still it has a chance to drift lower. So as you can see, it, it did have a chance to move higher here, but then quick kind of after a couple of days, it reversed back down and and, and continues to trade below the 0 0.2053 territory. So keep your eyes on that one, guys. Basically for now, it's like I said, it's a little bit messy here. Uh, that's probably the only uh, word I can exp describe this trading activity. Now then, um, in terms of uh, some pairs now, uh, ADNZD. Now, uh, this morning we had some data coming out from uh, from Australia, like the uh, home loans and, and uh, so some some figures here. Maybe not significant enough, but. Well, still, uh, still not very good. I mean, uh, the home loans came on a month-to-month -month basis, came out at minus 4.4%. So the previous figure was one minus 1%. So you have a huge kind of decline here. And uh, when I looked at this pair last time, AUD and ZD, um, it's kind of a tricky one. You can see right now that the NZD is kind of slightly on the better side. Uh, its performance is slightly, slightly on the better side. Yesterday we had a drop uh, below this level, this key important area of support near the 1.0668 uh, zone. I've talked about this one previously and uh, uh, we did get a drop but then we didn't get a close. Today we're having an, another test of it but it's still balancing above it. So um, basically this kind of this just kind of confirms how important this level is and once we get a nice daily close below this then uh, yep l maybe l slightly larger extensions um, uh, to the downside could be possible where we could then aim for the 1.0585 zone or even uh, near this area somewhere here around the 1.0532 which coincides currently with the 200 day EMA but uh, we're only 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 going to target that area and uh, and then we'll take it from there but that's of course in the scenario if we get a daily, a daily close below this 1.0668 zone in terms of the upside we'll take a very very conservative approach and wait for a push above this barrier right here uh, the 1.0865 and only then aim for higher levels until then, we're not really uh, looking at any upside. NZD CHF. So this is where uh, I haven't looked at this one for quite a while. As you can see, the some of the arrows, some of the lines have shifted. Let me just start this one over. Uh, but the good thing here is the, that the pair is still balancing above this 200-day uh, EMA. I mean, not to mention above the 100 EMA and the 21-day uh, EMA. So. Of course, uh, another positive aspect here is that the 21-day uh, EMA is now crossing above the 100-day EMA, so we'll see if it can cross above the 200-day EMA. Um, however, don't get me wrong, we may see maybe a small kind of correction a little bit lower here, uh, maybe that's another a, a test of the 200-day EMA, um, and uh, maybe the, the pair could hang around somewhere here, or it could the last kind of resort for the bulls could be somewhere near this upside line, so the, to step in near this upside line. But again, that's a bit of a, uh, maybe a bit of a big, a big one here, a big drop. Um, so that's why for now, we're just going to keep an eye on the 200 day EMA as a good potential area of support. Um, however, to get comfortable with higher levels, we would like to see a push above yesterday's high near the 0 0.6898 zone and then aim for higher levels. If we do see such a push uh, above it, then uh, the next target for us is around here near the 0 0.6429 uh, zone or even going we could go further here towards the uh, the highest point of December near the 0 0.6552 zone so keep your eyes on that one. Um, in terms of the downside, well, as I well as I mentioned, we need to see a break of this upside line uh, and a drop. Uh, maybe just this this is the cautious approach probably, and a drop below the 0 0.59 50, uh, 59.95 zone. So uh, and then yes, we could aim for lower levels like for example these here, the low of the 18th of May, and uh, maybe further below. 
However, for now, like I said, uh, it's still balancing above the 200 day EMA. So it has still a chance to drift higher, but to get comfortable with the upside, we need to see a push above the 0.6298 zone. GPP Aussie. Now this is where the interesting bit comes in. Um, so the, I talked about this pair yesterday and uh, basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line because we were still hanging around in the morning. We were still hanging around here uh, below this downside line. And um, what I was saying that given the fact that we had a strong reversal here, uh, a strong hold up near the 1.8058 zone, uh, what I was saying that be very careful, we might see a break of this downside line, but uh, we also need to see a nice good push above this uh, 1.8250 uh, zone. And as you can see, we did ha have both of that. And uh, today, this morning, although we're seeing a bit of a decline, a bit of a correction here, still the rate is balancing above this 1.8250 territory. So um, this kind of increases the chances for this pair now to drift higher. Of course, we'll be very careful here. Um, you can see that the, our oscillators here, the RSI and the MACD, are supporting uh, uh, this idea of, uh, of a possible move higher. However, don't get me wrong, um, with the RSI and the MACD, I mean, for example, here in the RSI, we also saw this one kind of uh, climbing back above the uh, this 30 mark here, and uh, but then kind of failing to move further, further up and then reversing to the downside. So similar story here. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, uh, we are seeing a bit of positivity here. Um, the way you could play this one out is is of course for those who are more on the risky side you could keep an eye on this 1.8250 zone and if it continues to uh, provide decent support then yes an another push higher could be possible but if it climbs above uh, today's high uh, which we already established here near the 1.8337 this is where it could become very interesting and we could see the buyers kind of joining in here more buyers joining in and pushing this one higher we're not going to drag this one too much to the upside we're only going to aim going to be aiming for areas like the 1.8526 or the 1.8653 territory here um, but uh, yep or even we could see a, a test of the 1.8772 so basically this area right here up until this 200 day EMA I mean well like I said if we do see this strong move higher we'll reevaluate everything again and we'll see uh, how everything's gonna play out but from the shorter term perspective maybe even for today uh, you could aim for the 1.8526 uh, zone here uh, and then yes I will take it from there but again all this is in this in the uh, kind of in the scenario, if we get a, a nice good hold up near the 1.8250 and then a nice good push above the 1.8337. Uh, USDJPY. So this one is a bit of a mess here. And uh, I talked about this one yesterday. Basically, it broke below all of these uh, upside lines, which I've drawn yesterday. So basically, no longer valid. Of course, I've said that both of those are tentative. Um, so don't focus on them too much, but focus on some of these um support and resistance levels and now the important one here is at 107.32 zone as you can see the pair is drifting low towards it previously here and the end of may it acted as a very strong area of support let's see if it can do the same thing right now if it cannot and we see a daily close below this then yep further declines are possible and if and uh, we'll aim for the 105.94 zone which is marked by the lowest point near the lowest point of may in terms of the upside, we would need to see this one climbing back above the 108.08 level and the 200-day EMA as well. And then, yep, we could aim for the uh, the high of last week near the 109.85 zone. But again, for now, it's, it seems it's it wants to move lower. Uh, Euro USD. Uh, this one is working out perfectly with with this with the idea which I mentioned yesterday. Uh, in in my morning video yesterday, I've talked about this idea of, of seeing a bit of a uh, a drop lower towards this 23.6% retracement on the Fibonacci here, which coincides perfectly with the 1.1237 zone. We had a perfect hit and then we had a rebound. So yep, yep, this scenario is working out nicely. For those who are more on the cautious side, what I was mentioning yesterday as well that um, you could wait for a break above the 1.138 zone which is marked by the high of uh, last week and uh, this move higher here would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, uh, the next targets here would be these highs in March uh, that we had in March and uh, or in uh, we could aim for the 
1.1458 zone or the 1.1496 area roughly around there marked by the highest point of March uh, and the high at the same time the highest point of this uh, year so far uh, so yeah let's see how this is gonna play out but like I said uh, wait for a break above the 1.1384 and then, yes, we could target higher levels. For now, like I said, be very careful with this one. In terms of the downside, now looking at this, the way it's going to shape, the way it's shaping up, we could start looking at uh, lower levels if we get a drop below this 1.1237 zone. Because yesterday I've talked about this level only here, the 1.1147. But as I said, the way everything's shaping up now, this uh, a break below the 1.1237 uh, could open the door to a slightly lower level. So, yep, be very careful with that, guys. So, I hope you found it useful. And uh, thank you very much, guys, for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you watching this video. Uh, thank you very much for your likes and comments. And uh, like I said, if you want to catch my video later on, my Traders uh, Tea Time, as always, around 13, 15 GMT. Uh, but for now, guys, today, be very careful and uh, keep your eyes on the calendar. We do have some interesting data. We have the US core CPA, CPI coming out and together with the headline CPI uh, figures. So those are expected to come out slightly better, uh, some of some better. Like, the, for example, this, the core CPI month-on-month -on -month figure is believed to imp have improved. Um, uh, so, But the year-on-year -year number, the core number, is believed to have uh, still declined a little bit. Now, the same story with the headline CPI figure, the US CPI figure, um, is that the month-on-month -month, uh, number is believed to have improved. However, the year-on-year -year number is uh, is believed to have declined. So this could, if so, if if basically the figures come out worse than the forecasts, uh, then yep, uh, ex you expect some maybe uh, dollar uh, weakening a little bit. So, but yeah, like I said, let's see how the figures are going to come out. Of course, we do have the crude oil inventories as well, something to keep an eye on for oil traders, and the most important, of course, the FOMC statement later on in the evening. And uh, yep, keep your eyes on that, and uh, it will be quite interesting to see uh, what the FOMC has uh, in 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 their minds. So, uh, yep, thank you very much, guys, for watching and listening, and I'll see you later today. Thank you very much, and bye bye.